and welcome to the show. And now, this. Hello there. Your old mate Reg do-it-yourself trust got here again with some more helpful tips and handy hints for the DIY gang. Last week, you remember, I showed you how to build this useful wall unit using up some of the excess wood we had left over from the cigar box. And as you can see, it's done wonders for the room. This week, uh, we'll be talking about safety. Too many of you seem to be getting into trouble with electric tools, like our old friend here, the drill. <laughs> Do I just start again? Uh, from the drill. From the drill. Thank <coughs> you. Right, like our old friend here, the drill. First thing to remember, chums, never leave the drill plugged in when you're not using it. Otherwise, there could be a nasty accident. <laughs> our old friend, the cross-cut saw. Now, don't leave these lying around, as I've done here to demonstrate. There's a place for everything, and everything in its place. This is where he lives, so let's put him safely away. <laughs> Sorry. It's going quite well, really, isn't it? Well, that's where Mr Crosscut lives. So, DIY fans, that's all for this week. Remember, safety first in the workshop makes for a happy workshop. By the way, have you spotted my trusty crutch? It's beautiful, isn't it? You probably think I bought it from a chemist for about £12. Well, no, sir. Ow. No, siree. I've knocked this up in half an hour this morning. Total cost £1.5p. <laughs> you know it makes sense. Have a good DI week. See you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, DIY buffs. Rage Prescott here with some more helpful DIY tips for all DIY freaks out there in DIY land. <laughs> well, you'll let us keep rolling in, and as you can see, I've got them stacked in this handy mail rack that we made last week for a staggering total of £1.87. <laughs> this one... <laughs> from Derek Hollingsworth of Ward 3, the Middlesex Hospital, and he says, Dear Reg, more power to your DIY elbow. <laughs> Unfortunately, I had a little disagreement with my electric saw while constructing my mail rack. But not to worry, I'll be back in DIY harness by the time you get this. <laughs> in fact, they say I'll have to wear this harness for a while yet. What's that, Lavi? Yours, DIYly. Derek Hollingsworth. Right on, Derek. Just before we start, I'd like to say a few words about looking after your tools. A dirty tool is no use to anybody. They've got to be in the right place and clean and sharp, like our old mate, the crosscut saw. He likes to live down here. And I've really had a go at sharpening him today. <laughs> Sorry about that, Kevin. Can you push that and sort of pick it up to master the saw? Yes, please. Because it seemed all right up to there. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Well, now to business. Let's get on with our French provincial Louis XIV cabinet, or cabinet, as they say in the Belle France. You'll remember that last week we started the cabinet and we've completed the frame as you can see. This week, we'll be doing the doors. And for this, we'll be using our trusty old chum, the electric jigsaw, down here. <laughs> Hold it! Hold it! I was holding it. you never to leave uh, electric tools plugged in on the bench or else you might have a really nasty accident. <laughs> right, this little rascal here can be a very handy friend around the workshop. It will save us a lot of time making our cabinet francaise. With this all-purpose blade, which is sharp enough to cut through anything... <laughs> Let's get the door part, shall we? Let's call this door here, 
Number one. <laughs> now this door over here. Good boy. Number two. As you can see, I've marked out the shape. I will be cutting. That will be cutting. Right. Yeah. Right, we'll put the cutter on the edge here, right? Here we'll grab the wood with this hand. And we'll start off by cutting down the line, making sure we have the wood nice and steady. <laughs> Uh, here we are then. <laughs> Le cabinet est fini. <laughs> As you can see, uh, it, it's a piece of cake and takes no time at all. <laughs> I'd love to hear from you about how you got on. You know, there's lots of room in these drawers for... Kevin, are these my fingers? <laughs> Well, uh, that's it for now, DIY fans. See you next week. The other way! Oh, <laughs> and don't forget to keep the workshop tidy. Thank you. <laughs>got here with some more helpful DIY hints for your DIY day. This week, glue. As you can see, I've got in front of me here a lot of things that have been broken. Why don't you throw them away, I hear you cry. No siree, they can have a whole new life thanks to our old friend Mr Glue. Take this broken glass, for instance. I mean, some people might say, chuck it out, Ridge. Others might say there's blood on my overalls. There's <laughs> <laughs> blood on my overalls. Hold it. And action. Sorry, Kevin. <laughs> oh, pardon? Action. Oh, where do we go from? From the glue. The glue. Right. Hello. There are many types of glue on the market. There's Bostic and plastic. But this is my particular favourite here. It's called Superbond, and it sticks anything to anything. But do be careful not to let it get anywhere near the skin. This one, for instance, is stuck to my hand. There's still a bit of glue on the outside of the container, but not to worry, because we can get that off with a quick... Tug! <laughs> bit of skin off there. I think a few stitches won't bend. What you must be careful of, of course, is that there is some glue on the bench now, for instance, and it can stick to your leg. But not to worry, because you just apply some leverage against the edge of the bench, <laughs> taking care that there's not glue about, as there is in this case. My legs, <laughs> my legs stuck to the bench. In which case, you should try to get the <clears throat> methylated spirits onto the scene, <laughs> taking care, of course, not to uh, knock over the glue, which in this case <clears throat> is all over the place. And you can't end up in this position that you see me in now. Well, I seem to wrap it up this week. This is Ed Prescott signing off and saying, see you next week. I'll certainly be here. Goodbye. <laughs> Hello, DIY freaks. Reg Prescott here with another fun pack journey into DIY land. <laughs> this week, <laughs> so, yes, our old buddy, the pot. As you can see, we've got quite a pot pourri here this week. <laughs> all sent in by viewers just to show you what the final result of the old potter's wheel can be. Whoops, nearly <laughs> had a little accident there with the old Ming. Leave him safe and sound right here on the bench while we go over to look at the wheel itself. You may remember the wheel. Oh, follicles. You may remember that we made this lovely wheel last week. And as you can see when I turn on the electricity supply, it's poetry in motion. Isn't that lovely? And of course, there are varying speeds. Let's switch it to high. <laughs> Keep bringing your fingers up slowly to achieve the desired <laughs> As you can see, this is all going very well indeed. The next step.
stage, the next stage, we take the pot, which, as you can see, is completely finished, over to the kiln. We should be at exactly the right temperature. It was turned on two whole days ago. <laughs> that should be just fine. Right. Now, let's have a look into the little hole there. Yes, it's raging away like a wild thing. Let's go inside, shall we? <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> well, a successful session under the belt. See you again next week. Bye. <laughs>